everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful Friday. The rain has quit for now. We'll see what's on our horizon. Um, today I want to talk about awaken. Um, people are awakening. Places are awakened. Concepts create the opportunity for awakening. How does awaken happen? Well, we have to move from our conscious mind into our unconscious mind. And there's awareness that happens. And that happens in what they call the reticular activation system. It's back here at the base of the spine, or top of the spine. Um, it's about two inches long. And it helps us filter through our experiences. All your senses, the sign, all your senses go through this reticular activation system except for your smell. Um, it is the gateway between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. And it filters what it doesn't validate. So, um, what I'm saying there is, is that you can be in a room of people, and while you're standing there in that room of people, you're talking to one person. It's real noisy all around you, but you're able to focus in on that one person. And then um, somebody comes up, says your name. It might be five feet away. You'll hear that, but you didn't hear all the murmuring because your focus wasn't geared into hearing what everybody else was saying. Your focus was filtering out them so you could hear the person you were talking with. Now, um, this kind of works the same way with awakening. We have, let's call it uh, lower earth, middle earth, high earth, okay? Um, in that concept, you have people who, in lower earth, they live their everyday lives, um, they know people who do good and bad things. They take their children to the doctor. Um, they have their set beliefs, and they're going to stick with those beliefs. And sometimes somebody may have the belief that they need to drink a lot of alcohol because that's the pattern that they set for their, their life. That's their focus of their filter. And maybe they get abusive. Um, to their spouse or to their children. And with that being said, everybody in that situation experiences this dysfunction, this level of dysfunction, as if it's truth, okay? Um, and that's the awareness they hold until somehow somebody gets triggered to understand that it's not normal and that's when we realize we've been traumatized. So that sets us on our path. So that's kind of the middle earth where you realize that something doesn't feel right. And so you're, you're going to evolve from that. Okay, that's middle earth. And that sets a whole different precedence for what you're focused on and what your goals are and how you want to live. And you start filtering out information that is no longer truthful to you. Um, you may feel like having to eat spinach one day was um, going to save your life. So you ate spinach every day for 30 years until you realized it's no different than eating broccoli, spinach, and beets, and corn, or whatever. I don't want to get the corn debate going here. <laughs> However, we go through these things, and that's what the reticular activation series is doing. It goes in and it helps you uh, filter out the information that aligns with your belief system, okay? And that's how we create our beliefs. It helps us draw like-minded people to us. You know, a lot of people, we don't even realize, um, wow, we're, we find people who love baseball. We love baseball. We find people who love to meditate. We love to meditate. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, we find people who uh, believe in our, what our community stands for. So yay, we've drawn together our like-minded community. And we see, hear, and experience that through the reticular, uh, I'm going to call it the RAS, activation system. We filter it all through there, so it reinforces and validates what we believe. This um, has a really strange way of um, making people understand that they're okay until something happens and they heard something that takes away that belief system. So let's think about politics. It doesn't matter one way or the other, whoever believes what. But we listen and hear the words that validate what we want to believe. If we want to believe in conspiracy theories, yay, we're going to hear the conspiracy theories. If we want to believe that um, conspiracy theories are actually true, that they aren't telling us that they've kept away from us, um, okay, great. That works too. I had a friend come to tell me one time that, you know, the Illuminati are really coming down and messing with this and how we were going to suffer and, and create hell because of it and we were going to experience all this horrible life. And I said, you know, the Illuminati do not care what Michelle Vidal in Albuquerque, New Mexico has to say. I'm not that important. So for her, that became a very real threat. For me, not so much. So our, our paths divided because I didn't have the energy to invest in that. And I'm okay with that. And I'm sure she's okay with what she needs and what validates her. I don't think any of this is wrong. I think that we have to go through the layers of understanding of what happens here. And there's only really one way to understand it, and that's to pay attention to what is validating our belief systems and possibly listening to opposing facts so that we hear the other way. Now, um, a lot of people think Jesus is salvation to God, okay? Until we start understanding that we have to be responsible for our own actions and that it's not just that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that we get to go to heaven, but that we actually get to go and experience the co-creation and become accountable for our life patterns. And once we do that, we shed some of the fear that we're not good enough and we shed some of the fear that we have to be uh, in God's grace, and we might get to uh, rise up in 2033 because that's when the 6,000 years is over. I'm not saying this to mock people. I'm saying this to show you that there is truly other belief systems. Um, all I can tell you is, is that we know that we can either own our sword of truth or can become the sword we die on. And who wants to die on a sword of misinformation because we quit understanding that. Now, I used to tell people um, unbelief, and, and people got really mad. They were challenging me for my um, word unbelief instead of disbelief. Disbelief means I dismissed it. Unbelief means is that I quit believing in something. So I'm going to ask you, what is it? that you believe that you might need to unbelieve so you can create a better life. Um, it's funny how we work in this world. We say that we trust um, our friends and family, but do we? Do we say we're trusting the process or we can't trust our friends and family because, well, you know, they push our buttons. So how about trusting the process becomes a whole lot more understanding and it leaves us open to have more experience into what we're trying to experience and create and grow from. So a total stranger, you would trust them. Um, 
not to hit you with a car when you cross the street. Is that an erroneous thing to, to believe? I don't know. I've not been hit by a car, so I guess trusting that traffic, the people, the strangers in the cars are not going to hit me is a good thing. Because I can still walk down the street. But we, we struggle with these things. And we forget that we need to trust Source or our higher self. But our lower self has that negative talk that we engage in. We're not worthy. Life is going to not work out. I will have to give up all my belief systems so that I can make money, so I can have a house, so I can have um, a husband, wife, children, people over for barbecues. We forget that we're co-creating. So we have to trust our higher self to guide us to those things. And that comes with practice. It's, um, we also can can to our spirit team and have them be open to their guidance. Sometimes I think, oh gosh, I really need to know. And I go, they got me. They know, and that's all that matters. I don't need to know what my end game is. All I need to know is, is that I'm walking in that direction. And that gives me a sense of freedom because the onus is off my back to create it by deliberate thinking, which can get caught up with negative speak and fear. Handing it over to them, trusting them to show me the process to guide me through it, I work as my the other part of my spirit team. And people don't always understand that. They... Um, don't always go by listening to their frequency. Sometimes you'll get a uh, psychic, or even your friend, because um, we're all psychic, uh, you bring your problem to them. You know, I'm really afraid that my boss is going to fire me. And they always key into things predicated on your fear. Why? that may happen. Well, it's because you're constantly late for work. No, I'm not. I was late one time this whole year. Yeah, but that was a big one. We can't keep telling people why they're getting things the way they are unless we're asked to go into their vibration and give them a reading. We can't say things off the top of our head because we're coming from our story. Um, my sister asked me one time, is it me? Is it me? And I said, yes, <laughs> it's you. Um, she was mad as heck at me. She had been married, divorcing number four. And she really wanted to blame him. But I said, no, it's you because you're the one that keeps finding these guys to marry Instead of being at peace with who you are and finding out who you are and healing you so that you don't get that same person anymore. They kept showing up, each one a whole level of different but the same. And they all played into her story of the brokenness that was our childhood. It becomes a awareness to say, I don't want to live with that trauma anymore and shed, okay? So, the reticular activating system, ah, got it this time, actually helps us to bring light as well. So, it's not just about filtering out, it's about bringing something in. And that's where the work between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, the gateway, really works. It's like that buffer. If you've ever taken my class on uh, consciousness, you'd understand the buffer. And it's sometimes it's a really good thing that we have that buffer because we're not bringing in all the stuff that happened to us um, constantly bombarding ourselves with negative. Because it's so much easier for us to look at the negative things that happened to us than actually experiencing the positive. It's really easy to point a finger and say, that person is the cause of, of my unhappiness. 
instead of saying we need to look at how we need to create a peace of mind for our own. So when we know this, um, we, we actually start filtering out by creating situations that no longer fit in our story. And we start creating the opportunity to actually validate our new belief systems. And so it gets easier and easier and easier not to buy into the mentality of that lower tier. So we're now in the middle tier. Okay? We now learn that we can grow past some of the aches and pains and the, and the self-fulfilling prophecy of trauma and drama that we used to want to create because it was comfortable. Um, somebody says, you know, it's, it's easy to drink beer. It's easy to just go to work. Hi, Bernadette. Um, it's easy to just do the basics. It's not easy when you want to shift your consciousness. Hey, Pat. Um, so when we want to unbelieve and unvalidate our belief system, we can do it at any time. We just need to start doing it, start listening to things. How do we know what it is that we need to unbelieve? Well, if it creates fear in you, it's not a good belief. If it causes you to get angry at people, it's not a good belief. If it causes you to attack other people for their work or go into competition instead of joining in and building frequency together, you, you set up the opposite side because you can do it better. You're not really good in your belief system because co-creation is about co-creating together. So if you wanted to build a community of like-minded people, you would start with drawing forth the people who are like-minded. And the ones that aren't will go away, and that's okay. It's, you know, no harm, no foul. They brought to the table for however long they were there the important things that you need and you want to know so that you can create more community and raise your frequency and blend more with power. If we practice, which is what we have to do, we have to study what we're doing, really apply our awareness to it, study things like metaphysics. It's great. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm the metaphysician in the room. I'm the one that's going to say, hey, there's other things you've got to learn besides your gifts of spirit. There's other things that you have to do besides just following your inner guidance or your spirit guidance. There are foundations that you need to learn so that you can build a stronger work, healing aspect, uh, gifts of spirit, a better, more positive you. But we have to study. And we have to be willing to really read books and learn. We can't just say, oh, I can manifest this, or I can do that. We can. But how accurate are you going to be? How easy is it going to be? What kind of hell are you going to create to do it with? Because if we're not applying ourselves through our steps methodically and going through the process, and we create haphazardly, well, you know, and, and I'll give you a, a good indication here. I started with the book Weaving Fate and um, read the book and I started deliberately creating my own healing, okay? Not worried about anybody else. I was working on me because there's layers, layers to everybody's life and layers to everybody's pain and anguish and sorrow. So I started to following the book and, and what it said to do, and I started creating my future by writing it as if it happened yesterday. Well, nowhere in the book am I going to write, oh, I fell down and broke my leg. Okay? Not going to happen. I don't like pain. Yet, however, I did write, I love my new car. It makes me feel so comfortable and safe. Blah, blah, blah. 
and I'm thinking two or three years down the road when I need a new car, okay? And I wrote about how I was doing all this work to bring forth my different levels of awareness and to grow and to, to bring healing to myself and my world. And um, yeah, got in a car wreck in December. Yow. Bought a new car. I love my new car and started going to rolfing because I have a fracture on T7 that I got when I was seven years old. I dislocated C1, C2, you know, atlas pivot where you, you actually rotate your head. Yeah, another eighth of an inch, severed, dad, paralyzed, labor dad. Yeah, that was me. And there's others. I have a slip disc, L5 over the top of S4, so it actually comes over this way. It doesn't go this way or this way, it goes this way. So the raw thing is actually getting my core strength back. I lost my core strength when I went into uh, my years of grieving for my son because I just didn't want to walk, I didn't want to move, I didn't want to feel the pain. Movement brought pain. So guess what? I got raw thing and I'm dealing with all that pain that got stuck in my body, because my mind understood the trauma. This is what I'm talking about, creating by design, and being a part of it, and being willing to walk through it, okay? So, looking back at the honesty of it all, we need to learn to trust the truth, and practice it and finding that we trust it to create more truth. So we need to accept and be accountable for the power of our truth because that's another feeling we have. We don't value what comes to us so easy. So if somebody tells you, oh, you know, you're um, an amazing baseball player, sometimes they don't value that. And so they don't go on to be playing the big leagues. Okay, so we have to study, we have to put it to practice, and then we have to own it so that we can take the next step up. Now, in level one, tier one, we debase ourselves. We go all the way down to the bottom, and we create all that drama so that we learn not to create it, so we learn we don't want to live that way. And we step up to tier two, the middle middle earth, okay? Somebody showed us a life hack. You know those life hacks that they do and you see them on YouTube? You see all these really cool life hacks, things that you would have never thought about in your entire life if you hadn't seen somebody else do it? Yeah. This is your spiritual life hack. What I'm telling you about the RAS is your spiritual life hack. This is your doorway, this is your gateway to access, okay? And, I, and it's important that we know that it's there so that we start questioning, is this old truth? Is this new truth? Is this middle earth? Is this lower earth? So it's, it's really hard. We need to train with a mentor. We need to train with somebody who will actually walk us through the process. But we don't want to do that. We'd rather spend $500 on a vacation because we need to relax instead of doing a $200 vacation so we have $300 to invest in study. Or buy a book and talk with friends and have a conversation about what could be in that book that will help you grow. So let's look at this a little more clearly on the tiers, or the middle earth, lower earth. Lower earth, you've got the perpetrator, you know, the perpetrator's over here, the victim's over here, and the savior's up here. That's that nice triangle, okay? I've looked at this every which way but loose on so many levels for so many years. Until somebody steps out of that game, you're going to keep playing the game. So let's say you're divorce and 
you're the one that the ex is always ranting and raving about. If you step out of the game and quit being the victim to that ranting and raving, then you start to heal. You don't need to worry about what they're doing. But you also take with you the children. And when you take with you the children, then they can start to heal too. Because you can share the children, but you don't have to share that negative value of the arguing and the hate. So, like I said, savior, the top, perpetrator, victim. We all switch the roles. We switch, that's a spin of the triangle. Um, in Middle Earth, we have the addict, the codependent, and the recovered. Okay? Because when we've got the perpetrator, they're usually beating and drinking and drugging. Okay? The victim is broken, crumbling, and may possibly die. And the savior is somebody who is going to end up uh, trying to pull them out only to get beaten, belittled, and endangered. It's just kind of that way. The Middle Earth, the addict knows they're an addict, the codependent's getting help, and the recovered is the person who's kind of leading the train, the mentor. Okay? And it really doesn't matter because it just it's just that awareness of knowing it, okay? That's where you want to be. It's the same thing with our spiritual growth. When we're up in the higher, we have spirit. Now, a lot of you would say she should say source or God, but I'm going to tell you it's spirit. And I'll tell you why. Because we're not ready to go back to, to uh, where source is. So spirit is where we go back to. Spirit, okay, we walk, we come from spirit, we walk this earth, having our earth experience, not worrying about what experience is, just following along for our path of enlightenment, and then we go back to spirit. It's this bottom line that's really important to us now. It's the walking the path that so powerful for us and so important for us and we are going to do this time and again until we reach the Christ consciousness we've heard people say I'm going to be in the fifth dimension that's just a level of awareness it's not an exit strategy it's not a ride on a spaceship <clears throat> it is about opening up your vision so you have a more clear value of who you truly are, the light that's within you. The fourth dimension is when you're just kind of opening it up a little and you're seeing possibilities. So the first two, lower earth, lower earth and middle earth, are about really kind of walking along and in the third dimensional awareness. And when we get to the fifth dimension, we start opening up to some heavy possibilities. Like, what if I told you that we're on Earth, and because there's no such thing as time except for the concept that we have now, what if I told you that we could possibly, this is up to you to feel like it's your belief or not, but we could possibly be experiencing life simultaneously with other lifetimes or with other times within this lifetime. I call it time slipping. I know I do it. So to me, that's true. I time slipped. I was at Chaco Canyon. Time slipped. I uh, was standing in the middle of the market where everybody was gathering and trading and eating. Fires were going. This was back in like 1200 A.D., you know, somewhere in there. Um, and I had the vision of the medicine man who was looking at me. And I was looking at him. And I knew I was standing there in my now, in the, in the now. There's a really good book. It's called The, uh, uh, the, 
Oversoul 7. Oversoul 7. I, mean, I can't remember the full title. You'll get it if it's Oversoul 7. Where this actually happens because we're we're here in our higher self having these experiences. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we're actually experiencing things and we have the ability to bring knowledge in from those other timelines, those other, other higher self uh, experiences. We can tap into our higher self, bring them for our own healing. We can do a lot of things, but we can't do it if we don't understand it. We can't do it if we negate it. We can't do it if all we're interested in is healing in other people and not ourselves. If we only want to hear what a psychic has to say and we're not trying to access our spirit team for ourselves. In the words of a very wise discarnate on the other side, white elf, to know a thing is true is to make it so. So from my heart to all of yours, I really want to say thank you for listening. Think about your possibilities. Talk to me. Reach out. There are ways of learning. I have a great book list. There's things happening. Sometimes behind the scenes where you're not aware. We have a, a group that we do study books. We study. It's a book study group. And we're happy to share. Um, but yeah, we're here, and I would like to welcome you into Resident Essentials to expand your higher self. Um, my heart to all of yours, and we'll talk to you next Friday. Bye.